Welcome back. My name is Vern, and today we will be discussing a very sensitive subject. So uh, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, uh, this is sensitive. We will be using JW Org, but what we do here on Fixing My Faith is we give the rest of the story. So my name is Vern. I'm an ex-JW. I was a Jehovah's Witness for 30 years. I uh, carried many responsibilities throughout the organization, throughout my duration, and at the tail end, I was uh, doing some unassigned pioneering work in northern Canada. And this is about the time when the residential schools uh, it was uncovered here in northern Canada when various religions, namely the Catholics, were uh, it's been unveiled here in Canada that they had buried children. They 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 killed children, tortured them in these residential schools. They stole the children from the parents, from the Aboriginal people back in, in the day. And uh, this was all done under the name of a religion and the government supported it because of course there's lots of religious people uh, uh, sitting on parliament, especially at that time. <clears throat> so back in that time, everyone relied on religion Religion was it, and mainly it was the Catholic Church. They trusted the Catholic Church, but here's what they did. They, they, they abused these children in these residential schools, and there was mass graves of hundreds of them. So that's been uncovered. The Pope had to come up here. I did a video. The Pope drove right past our place here, and he had to come up and apologize. So all of these apologies, what do they do? What do they tell us as people? They tell us that the religions are guilty. Uh, they're accepting culpability for what they've done for the atrocities. And now we are talking about child sex abuse within the Jehovah's Witness organization. And we see how the organization, how uh, this organization has changed. And it's went out to uh, all of the uh, supporters of uh, cults and of the Catholics and all the religions. They, the Jehovah's Witnesses have went out and hired them. So we're going to talk here today about the uh, Watchtower scandal. If you look at the picture there, you notice uh, there's a guy in bed with the governing body of the Watchtower. What's this guy's name? I have him here. I will have this tool pronounce it. Um, I will turn the desktop audio on. Yeah, here we go. Here's his name. Massimo Introvigne. So you got that? Massimo Introvigne. Massimo Introvigne. Massimo Introvigne. That's, that's his name. That's his Italian name. <clears throat> so if you're a Jehovah's Witness, perhaps you've seen this guy. Uh, we are going to be looking at uh, JW Org. I'm going to put it up here on the little screen. And we are going to go to JW Org right to their website. And this guy should not be new for anybody from, from JW Org. Um, let me see if I can get this on a on a better screen for you there we go so this is a this is right on your jw org website and uh, you'll you'll see this guy so uh, we're we're gonna go there probably first but first of all i want to give you a little history on doctor they they show him as dr missimo introvenia that's how the, how, how they show him on the jehovah's witness website <clears throat> So now, who is this guy? Like, I was wondering who this guy was. I was reading about him in uh, Bitter Winter. We're going to look at that a little bit here. Now, uh, first of all, what I'd like to do is go to JW Org. And, and you see, the 30 years I spent in the, the Jehovah's Witness organization, and I raised my family there. I... I came in as a convert. I was about 18 and I left when I was 49 years old and uh, I had to leave everything to leave. Now we're going to read about what we were taught in the organization. It's still in there. It's uh, I plugged in Babylon the Great. I thought it would be important 
to see what Jehovah's Witnesses feel about Babylon the Great and if they're still teaching it. I left in 2012. Well, obviously they still are. It says, what is Babylon the Great right here? And uh, it, it says, Babylon the Great, described in the book of Revelation, is the world's collective body of false religions, which God rejects. And uh, quotes Revelation 14 and 8. We'll take a look at a scripture. And although those religions differ in many respects, in one way or another, they all lead people away from the worship of the true God, Jehovah. And this is what, uh, this is right from J.W. Ort, Babylon the Great. So when we were in the religion, and uh, uh, the big thing was uh, the Catholics. The Catholics were the bad, bad religion. Now, if you follow the, the whole history of the religion back to Rutherford, and that's, uh, uh, we're going to show some of these historians that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are relying on to protect them. <clears throat> and uh, they've went out to and hired Babylon the Great to protect them. And, and this is going to be a two-part video. Our next video is going to show you what they're doing legally and how they went out and, and hired a Cath the Catholic's lawyer legally. So that's our next video. So anyways, today we are talking about this guy that's in bed, M Massimo. How do you say him? Dr. Massimo is who they call him. They, they want to give everyone a doctor's name, like uh, Rutherford, a judge, Judge Rutherford. And he wasn't a judge. We, t we talk to people about that. Now, <clears throat> We all know as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and Jehovah's Witnesses how the organization feels about Babylon the Great. This was like beat into our head over and over again. And, and I believe it still is to a certain degree today. Maybe they're changing because JW Org is now getting into bed with Babylon the Great. And we're going to show this, this here in a few minutes. So I still believe, outside of religion, outside of all false religion, outside of all the religions, and Jesus never had a religion, by the way. He turned the tables over in the religious temple. He was not a religious man. You see, religion came later. So uh, if you're a follower of Christ or you follow the way, or the way is really about love, it's easy. You don't need a religion. And uh, Jesus didn't talk about that. But anyways, Jehovah's Witnesses and, and all these religions formed. And uh, so the Bible talks about this Babylon the Great when all of these religions would uh, have uh, commit fornication with the governments or something like that. That's how Jehovah's Witnesses teach it. Now, we're going to look at the scriptures here. <clears throat> the scriptures in Revelation uh, chapter 17 verses 1 to 8 says, Then when... Uh, one of the seven angels who had the seven bulls came and said, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet-colored beast that was full of blasphemous names. And it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet, and adorned with gold, jewels, and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup, full of admonitions and impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes of earth's abominations. So, <clears throat> I know it's not a real prostitute because Jesus actually forgave the real prostitute. Jehovah's Witnesses pulled that piece out of the Bible, but that's when the Jews wanted to stone her. And Jesus says, who of you have not sinned, cast a first stone, and they all left. So I know it's not talking about a literal prostitute. This is talking about prostituting yourself. This is, this is quite clear to me. I, I believe when I go back to what Jehovah's Witnesses say here, what is Babylon the Great? Yeah, it's the world empire of all these religions. These filthy, dirty religions. Why? Because of sexual immorality. And that's what we're talking about today, folks. This is a hard subject, but we have to face it as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and as Jehovah's Witnesses. And we have to help the rest of the world see that, that uh, they're being, it's fuzzy. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses want to fit in. It's very easy. Uh, if we'll look at a few of these videos to see how they want to be in Babylon the Great. 
the modern day Jehovah's Witnesses. So that's why I tell elders and everyone, now is the time to get out. So why? Well, if you go a little further and you look at what the Bible says, an angel of light, 2 Corinthians uh, 11, 13 to 15. It says, such men are false prophets, deceitful workmen disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness and their end will correspond to their deeds. So I want to ask you the question. If religion out there is hiding pedophiles, covering it up, hiding under the clergy penitent privilege, and all of these poor kids are getting abused and, 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 and there's no resolution. It sounds to me like uh, in Canada here, where all these uh, residential schools, they, they just threw them in there and they didn't care. Th this is the mentality of religion. Once you get outside of it, it's very clear. It's very clear to see that they're all in bed together. So <clears throat> it's no wonder it says, because Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And this is what's gonna happen here. We're gonna look at how uh, all of these people are stepping up to the plate for Jehovah's Witnesses and they're disguising themselves. They're disguising the organization as an angel of light. Isn't that what Satan does? Makes it look good on the outside, but inside it hides child molesters. And let's not pick on Jehovah's Witnesses. It's all the religions. Folks, it's time that this comes to an end. And it's you and I that have a voice. And there's a protest, uh, uh, a licensed protest at the White House, October 31st, put on by BeFree2023.com. Go there and you can get the directions. Everyone's welcome. And uh, we're fighting against this. We're fighting against this very problem within all religions, but especially because we were in the Jehovah's Witness, especially because we stood out and we looked all over and said, everyone else is wrong. All the Catholics, everyone else, they're the molesters. That's, that's how I was brainwashed as a Jehovah's Witness. And we're going to look into this further about this, this fella, Massimo, this doctor they claim. And we're going to look at what kind of a doctor he really is. But first of all, <clears throat> uh, I want to look at one more scripture, John 8 and 44. Here's what it says. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. So anybody that's covering up pedophiles and uh, trying to make a religion look good and, and pass it off as a religion to cover over pedophiles. And it's not just pedophiles. It's the, and, the, and these guys, these religious people that write books, by the way, they're paid lots of money. They have lots of books, all of them. And it's all prestige. It's all money. And if you're Jehovah's Witness, all your donated money, this is where it's going. These are paid papers that they're, they're, they're getting to fight Norway. We're going to look at that today. But here it is. Uh, <laughs> he was a murderer. Satan was a murderer from the beginning. Does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks of his own character for he is a liar and the father of the lie. Now, if you look at one of my last videos, uh, we went to JW.org and we looked at theocratic warfare all the way through there. There's no scriptural support. But yet they tell their people to lie. And uh, I was in the organization. They had me lie to carry uh, goods across the border into another country uh, to help a Bethel. But I had to lie so they could evade taxes. So this is what this organization does. Every, no one knows about this. All these fluff talk people out there are looking at the organization from the outside. And from the outside, it looks like it's they're decent people. But on the inside, it's, wor it's idolatrous worship of, of nine men now in New York. They're, they're, they're Hollywood movie stars. They're building a movie production theater. They want idolization and worship. And that's what's happening. If you don't follow them, you get disfellowshipped. Now, no one talks about that. Uh, you get shunned. You get disfellowshipped. Even for, uh, I was talking about the indigenous people. I was sent by them up north to help indigenous people learn the truth. And I get up there and I find out their truth, their 13 rules of life is better than what the Jehovah's Witnesses are pumping out. And you bring that back and, and you say, hey, here's some coalition to the Bible and you get, you get basically shunned. 
you get uh, I, I was uh, I was humiliated they humiliated me off the platform and uh, um, we're still talking about this but this is this organization unless you're in the inside you don't know everyone on the outside Massimo yeah they pay him they pay him and I'm going to show you what you what Jehovah's Witnesses pay this guy to do but first of all let's learn a little bit about this guy Massimo he's with Bitter Winner a magazine on religious liberty and human rights this is what he pumps out human rights and he's big time into the Catholic uh, religious liberty and uh, you know we could we could go on this site and look all about him but I'm not gonna waste a lot of time so on Wikipedia we look at him he's uh, Italian Roman Catholic sociologist of religion and an intellectual property attorney so he does property that's what he is but uh, you know he they call him uh, Je Jehovah's Witnesses call him a doctor he's not called a doctor here unless I'm missing something now <clears throat> life and work uh, he was born in Rome um, he earned a BA in a philosophy of Rome's University in 1975 and he worked in the law firm and uh, intellectual property attorney so you know he's probably out there uh, doing all the work for the Vatican you know some of the work helping them with all their property uh, trying to see if they can seize more property right because it's all about owning property just like the Jehovah's Witnesses they want your estates you go we've covered this you go into their website they, all these religions want your property so that's why I'm saying to the people out there get out of religion now is the time Babylon the Great's falling these religions are falling the governments are tired of the hiding pedophiles the courts are tired of it but these guys are protecting it and we're going to carry on uh, this guy um, intervene in new religions so he gets into religions and and uh, so professes to be a religious uh, professional and here's the big thing he's he's a critic of national attempts to identify or curtail so-called cults so he likes cults he's a cult lover and uh, in fact uh, here's what he does on, on issues however that are key to the religious human rights debates apostates and brainwashing now we covered that on this channel brainwashing is how religions have been controlling us the the main populace the layman for for thousands of years so once you get outside you wake up and no longer are we under the brainwashing of religions we're outside of it and here this guy is against it uh, he calls it undue influence com compromised amp academic research sect membership and potential for harm critical information exchange on the internet blah 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 he advocates doctrinary positions that favor groups like Scientology so here you go Jehovah's Witnesses you're right in with Scientologists you you are going to a cult lover a cult lover to help you out in Norway and I hope all the Jehovah's Witnesses hear this and and by the way folks I'm a small channel this is a small channel a mom and pops team and if you subscribe and like and share it really helps our channel out a lot so please do that but we're trying to help out our fellow Jehovah's Witnesses and all of those in the world like uh, the people that get sucked in with Massimo uh, you know so here you got it a Catholic a Scientologist a cult lover and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off so you can get a good good picture of him there he is he's in bed with the watchtower here's the guy so uh, yeah he's in bed with the watchtower now you're Jehovah's Witness you're gonna hang up no 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 there's no way he's in bed well I'm gonna show you he's in bed with your religion let's go to jw.org so here we go we're gonna go to jw.org and we pulled it up on the screen Dr. Massimo they call him introvini the only relationship between Jehovah's Witness and violence is that they've been victims of violence so let's listen to three minutes of this turkey here he is uh, do I have him turned on I do and we'll get it full screen for you and here you go I had a very good cooperation with Russia who is a very active member of the OSCE and did a lot on behalf uh, particularly of persecuted the Christians throughout the world so it seems to me somewhat paradoxical that now there are problems of religious liberty inside Russia 
I understand that the law used against Jehovah's Witnesses is a law against extremism. And it's perfectly understandable that Russia, for its geopolitical uh, location and its struggle against terrorism, is concerned about extremism. However, uh, religious liberty is something fragile, and definitions of extremism may easily be used against groups who are somewhat unpopular. And this is normally a test for the quality of religious liberty in uh, one country. I've been studying Jehovah's Witnesses for 40 years, uh, and uh, uh, a very important point uh, is in technical terms, uh, they are what historians and sociologists call a peace community. They are non-violent and peaceful, and they have never encountered uh, instances of violence. The only relationship uh, between Jehovah's Witnesses and violence is they have been victims of violence. Uh, the Nazi regime killed more than 2,000 of them. And there is the famous story that so peaceful were uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses when in concentration camps the Nazi used them as barbers, uh, giving their hands a razor because they are the only inmates who can be trusted not to turn the razor against the Nazi warden. So Jehovah's Witnesses are an extremely peaceful uh, community. Now, uh, I know uh, under Russian law, sometimes they are accused of being extremist because in their literature it is argued that they are the only true religion. But uh, uh, there are two comments about this. Number one, a certain emphatic style is typical of religious literature in general. Uh, we find this in the Holy Quran of the Muslim. Uh, we find this in the Old Testament in the Bible. And uh, the second one uh, is that uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses do not advocate that states or governments uh, uh, should give them uh, a better treatment uh, than to members of any other religion. Uh, so I believe calling uh, Jehovah's Witnesses extremist uh, is based on a misreading of what is the typical uh, literary style of their uh, literature and the banning or discriminating in any way uh, against Jehovah's Witnesses will be a mistake, will be dangerous for religious liberty of many other groups, and will tarnish the image Russia enjoys as a government and a country who does a lot in the international fora uh, to advocate religious liberty for persecuted Christians in many other countries of the world. Well, there you have it. Um, let's go back and look at this guy. There's uh, a guy that um, helps Scientologists, loves cults, grew up in Rome, works with the Vatican, loves the Catholics, loves all religions. And if, if any of the religions are picked on, um, I'm, I'm wondering how he feels about Taliban. You know, they're a religion. You know, some of these uh, exotic religions. So uh, I'm sure he's in there, uh, human rights, right? There's all kinds of human rights. Now, this guy here is in bed with Jehovah's Witnesses. So so that's, that's that. That's right off of uh, JW.org. Um, he's putting Jehovah's Witnesses in with all of the religions. So uh, when we go back to JW.org's article, What is Babylon the Great? It includes Jehovah's Witnesses. They're right in bed with them. And uh, that's right from JW.org. It's the best place to see this guy. Now, uh, of course, JW.org is paying this guy. And I'm going to pull up on the screen uh, next here this article. So this is an expert opinion. Uh, it's Ho Holy, Holly, Holly Falk. And uh, after we're done this, you're going to say, holy fuck. Uh, there's Massimo Introvini and J. Gordon Melton. These are the expert opinions 
on this paper for Norway. They're trying to combat that Norway situation. And after you look at this, you're just going to say, holy fuck. Now, number one, uh, this is it. We have been requested by the law firm of Mr. Shane Brady, representative of the Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses in the Netherlands to examine the report of sexual abuse and the willingness to report within the community of Jehovah's Witnesses. So it goes on and on and on. And then it says, we the scholars of the religious specialize in the study of new religious movements and minority religions. Oh yeah, okay. And then J. Gordon Melton is a distinguished professor of American religious history. So we're going to look at J. Gordon Melton. Uh, he's probably the easiest guy to listen to. And uh, then we're going to look at uh, Holly Falk. And she's an associate professor of the College of Humanities and Social Science and uh, Massimo Introvine has been until 2016 a professor of science sociology of religions uh, in Italy so he's the author of some 70 volumes on minorities of religion all of these people are selling books by the way they're all furthering their careers and Jehovah's Witnesses are paying for it so if you're contributing at the assemblies and at the kingdom halls to the worldwide work this is where your money goes so the report of methodological issues, we have read the report of great interest. So of course they're greatly interested in these cults. And the final conclusion that it's difficult to preventing our findings without precise representatives for Jehovah's Witness community, that we cannot give precise estimates. So here's like, this is the thing. We are, as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, we are a small minority. We're meeting at the White House this year. We're a small minority and we have been abused our human rights have been destroyed we've been shunned disfellowshipped we've lost our families and uh worse sexually abused for a lot and it's been hidden and covered up so from the inside of this this stinking gutless religion jehovah's witnesses were coming out bleeding and now we're showing you guys you guys who are doing this report the real truth. None of you guys ever lived in this religion. So you're speaking, it's all hearsay and it's all fluff. You're even saying in your article, you only interviewed a few people. So I think, I think this is all coming out. Now I'm going to go to the conclusion of this. So we'll paste this in the uh, description. So if you guys want to do a lot of reading, you can. Uh, key findings, a uniquely closed community. One of the key conclusions is that Jehovah's Witnesses are a closed community. Uh, defined as a group of people with equal identities that are extremely protected from the public. They don't have equal identities. There's a governing body, a hierarchy. We idol it. We were taught to idolize them. They are Hollywood movie stars. <laughs> They're in front of all the people every day. They idolize them. They listen to them over Christ. If you worship Christ in that religion, you will get disfellowshipped. It's not a Christian religion. I, I showed that on, in videos. So uh, you, the world needs to hear our side of the story. This, this is all fluff. Uh, uh, they're a closed community. You know why they're a closed community? Because the whole world, including the Catholics and every other religion out there, is from the devil. That's what they taught us. The governments, everything is wicked. That's why it's a closed community, because it's so highly brainwashed, which, of course, Massimo doesn't believe in brainwashing. But brainwashing is what you keep putting into your head. Our brains are like a record and we got to scratch the record, throw it out, get outside of this garbage of religion. If you're inside a religion, you're trapped inside your head and it's dangerous. It's going down. So, uh, and, and, and you know, it's pulling it down all the lawsuits. Um, you know, uh, some, some people where well, religion will never go away. Yeah. These ideologies may last for, for a while longer, but they'll eventually disappear. You know, it's, it's just like anything else. A hundred years goes by. Well, Russell started this religion a hundred years ago, and it's nothing like it. Uh, they made decisions in the congregation. If there was shunning, the congregation made that decision. It wasn't any body of elders. That all came later. It all got changed later when they wanted more power and prestige. So, anyways, <clears throat> it seems, uh, number 14, that Jehovah's Witnesses are a closed community in the negative sense of the term. They choose that. They choose the negative sense. This is part of the programming. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cover on all of this, but we're gonna get to the bottom of this. And uh, they go on with all their fluff. They compare them well. They're, the Catholics get away with this, but yet they can be a religion. Well, here's the difference, folks, with Jehovah's Witnesses and every other religion. Jehovah's Witnesses are taught to hate, abhor people. There's no intolerance within that religion. There's zero intolerance. And then they're asking the whole world to have all the intolerant tolerance for them. It, it doesn't work that way. They, they are going to attract back what they sow. Jesus taught that. Whatever you're sowing in that watchtower, you're going to get it thrown right back at you. And this is what's happening in the time we're living in. Don't fight it. They have reaped. They have sown and sown and sown in their watchtower magazine hatred for everyone for 150 years. And now they're getting it back. But uh, these people here that were never Jehovah's Witnesses are finding it a, a good cult. This is a good cult. We got to keep it around. You see, if they keep this cult around, all these uh, cult advocates, uh, then uh, if they can keep the Jehovah's Witness cult going, then they can keep all these other cults going. And it's big bucks. They sell a lot of books. And they get paid to write these papers. This paper wasn't for free. We're at the bottom of the paper finally. The finding be sexual abuse among Jehovah's Witnesses. We have no doubt that serious cases of sexual abuse have occurred among Jehovah's Witnesses and that some have not been properly reported to civil authorities. Given the size of the Jehovah's Witnesses, the contrary would be surprising. The report does not quote the classical works of our late colleague Anderson Shoup, with whom we had the opportunity to work on the issue of sexual and other abuse by clergy and other religions. Like it's just all a bunch of fluff. They're protecting pedophiles. These people are protecting uh, crimes that are happening within religions. Uh, here's the report's recommendation. We do not condone or under-evaluate in any way the horrible plague of sexual abuse, blah, 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 blah. But what we find problematic in the recommendation, on the other hand, is singling out Jehovah's Witnesses on the basis of uncertain results of the survey and faulty idea that they are more at risk than other groups in the society in general. Well, they are. Jehovah's Witnesses are a high risk because of the indoctrination and the idol worship of the governing body. Right now, the governing body is saying, drink the Kool-Aid, and if, if you're dying and you have no other solution but a blood transfusion, you choose to die. So death over life is what the, uh, the governing body teaches the Jehovah's Witnesses. They teach them to martyr, to, to, to go out to Russia, wherever, go to jail, lie in court, it's, it's theocratic warfare. This this is a uh, this is no different than the cat. Yeah, it's no different than the Catholic Church and all the other religions, but the difference here is a claim to have the Almighty Holy Truth, and that everything else is 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 false. And when we find this, then we go hard on it, because it's disgusting, and it has to quit. It has to start somewhere. The Catholics just have a lot more money, and it's an older religion. And it's going to go down too. All of these religions are going to go down with fighting the CSA and fighting all the atrocities that we've uncovered in this last 20 years with religions. We're sick of it. We are sick and tired of religions. And we're sick and tired of you people at Bitter Winter. So they also go on and say, we have problems with the recommendations that Jehovah's Witnesses should allow women to have decisive roles. Go to hell. Uh, women are equal as men, bitter winner. And, and if you guys want to hang on to that old, archaic, uh, uh, antique stuff, go live back in the dark ages. You know, we're done with this. Number 30, because of their minority status and their particular lifestyle, they're a fragile community. Bullshit. Look what they've done to us. We are a small XJ, XJW community outside of this BS and, and they have destroyed so many lives and that's why we are here at this end this has to stop so that's the end of it that's the end of it so here you go you got a you got a cult guy a cult leader Jehovah's Witnesses running for you now we're gonna look at uh, holy fuck and uh, I don't want to I've, I've listened to part of holy fuck stuff 
we're going to go to the very end. I'm not going to put you guys through too much of this stuff. Most powerful uh, behind anti-Jehovah's Witness activism in Europe, the Reclaimed Voices Foundation. Um, to continue talking about aggregate problems, um, you, you might want to sort of ask, you know, why was so much detractory information that's not germane to the question of abuse uh, incorporated into these studies? Um, there's a portrayal of Jehovah's Witnesses as being deviant for having conservative religious beliefs, yet many other religions have similar views, including on the issues of gender and disfellowshipping. So you guys, uh, my see, grandparents. Uh, you guys see the argument here is uh, they they want Jehovah's Witnesses to be like every other religion. They want them to be Babylon the Great. So. I, I don't even want to play a lot more of her. Uh, like, quite honestly, she just goes on and whines and whines. And she's from the Washington Call or University or something. You guys can look into her. I'll give you a link. Let's carry on to the next one. Um, this is Gordon. Uh, what's his name here? He used to say the Pledge of, of Allegiance. Gobitas. What's his name here? My cursor's not working up and down. International Conference Jehovah's Witnesses. This guy is the other guy on this paper, Melton, Gordon Melton. That's his name. So we're going to listen to uh, just a little bit of him here. Uh, let's let's see what he has to say. This was a region, recent convert to the Witnesses. He was inspired by stories of others who had challenged the system and suffered for it. He decided to make a stand himself and instructed his children not to pledge allegiance when at school. His son and his son's siblings were expelled. His business was boycotted. The situation led to a trial in February of 1938. And in June, a judge ruled that Minersville School Board requirements that the children salute the flag violated the children's free exercise of religious belief. So, in one, his court. So this guy talks all about uh, the rights of Jehovah's Witnesses. He he he's kind of a history buff. He's actually not a bad guy to listen to. Gordon Melt, and uh, I'll include a link for this. Uh, and he talks about Charles Taze Russell. Talks about the Watchtower. He talks about cults. Overview of Jehovah's Witness. He's pretty accurate in everything. Pledge of Allegiance, the salute of the flag. We know all about this as XJWs. We were a Jehovah's Witness. This is not new to us. This is not new history to us. Uh, I've been through it. But after I hear all of this stuff, it still does not justify hiding pedophiles in the congregation, having pedophiles as elders in the congregation. It doesn't justify any of that. It doesn't justify the covering up of abuse. It doesn't justify the, the watchtower saying just shred the records. It does not justify any of this stuff that's happening today. And in my opinion, Gordon Milt, uh, Holly Falk, and Massimo, these guys are all just what the Bible talks about right here, angels of light. These guys are all angels of light for the cults, for all of the cults out there. These three people, they write lots of books. They stand up for the cults. The, if, if we're believers in the Bible, it, it says, for such men are false uh, apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. You got that in the Mormons, the Catholics, the JWs, all of the religions. They're disguising themselves. And for no wonder, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no surprise that his servants, like these three people, are, are also disguising themselves as servants of righteousness and their end will correspond to their deeds. And, and that's where I sit with all of this stuff. I, 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 I have a very, very uh, negative view when I look at the Watchtower scandal and how they're in bed with Bitter Winter and these three names that we talked about and how they are fighting the Norway and the, and the Swedish decision. So... All of us XJWs, we're all here standing up for Norway. And it has to happen in other parts of the world. This is what has to happen now. We're in that time where Babylon the Great crumbles. And by getting outside, waking up, 
Now we can see clearly how religion has been a downfall of humanity since the beginning of time, probably. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.